on Truth Detective with Stephanie Lee. The main core topic of the episode is based on the truth. And in most episodes, some of the events, people, places, pseudonyms, and the lifestyle that I lead as a truth detective are fictionalized for a better truth detective storytelling experience. For each episode, go to the show notes for more information on the topic. Enjoy this episode. Welcome. This is Truth Detective with Stephanie Lee. Dystopian Stories. Evil in Savannah In the heart of Savannah, Georgia, a city known for its charm and mystery, haunting past, cobblestone streets, and natural beauty, there was a storm brewing. It's true, the court system in Savannah, Georgia, had become a breeding ground for injustice with unqualified judges, unqualified attorneys, and jurors who were ready to call any defendant guilty until proven innocent. The Georgia Supreme Court had been systematically ignoring the rights of its citizens. Cases were being rejected without proper consideration, and innocent people were being unjustly jailed without a speedy trial. The citizens were being denied the privilege of having an attorney, and worst of all, they were being kept in jail indefinitely without cause or due process. The city of Savannah was in desperate need of a truth detective, someone like me who could expose the facts and bring justice and truth back to its rightful place. I, your very own private investigator truth detective, have a historical reputation for unraveling the most perplexing cases. I've seen it all, from petty thefts to high-profile murders, but nothing could prepare me for the web of corruption that had ensnared the court system in Savannah, Georgia, and if these injustices continued, it would take off like wildfire in every state in the nation. One day I received a call from an acquaintance I met 12 years ago, an anonymous journalist who wanted to stay that way. Anonymous had been following the recent Savannah injustices in the court system, and Anonymous, with my help, was determined to shed light on the truth. Anonymous was a great partner for this endeavor. I believe that Anonymous had a keen eye for detail, an unwavering dedication to justice, and a nod to the forefathers who created this nation. I needed to know more, though, and by way of an unwavering sense of justice, we delved deep into the heart of the city's legal system. I began by investigating the first case that had sparked concern, the unjust imprisonment of a young man named Marcus Johnson. Marcus had been arrested on a minor charge, yet he had languished in jail for many years without a trial. We were committed to no one knowing where our headquarters were and disguised ourselves while we found out more information. News of this travesty had spread, igniting fear and anger in the hearts of the people. Anonymous and I were firm believers in the power of the law and couldn't stand idly by while more and more cases were brought to court, making the very foundation of justice crumble before our eyes. Armed with our trusty detective skills and journalistic know-how, we had an unwavering sense that something was afoot. So Anonymous and I gathered evidence and interviewed witnesses, most of whom didn't want to be known. These witnesses had seen deplorable acts of deviance that their friends and family members had to withstand within the court system, and we had indeed uncovered the truth. Our investigation led us to a web of corruption that reached far beyond the confines of the courtroom. We discovered that a powerful group of individuals known as a shadow consortium had been manipulating the Georgia Supreme Court for nefarious purposes. Their influence extended to high-ranking judges and politicians, ensuring that their agenda was pushed forward at the expense of innocent lives. The shadow consortium's ultimate goal was not just to control the Georgia Supreme Court. Uh Uh-uh. It was to spread their influence on every state in the country and globally. If their plans were allowed to succeed, the very fabric of justice in America would be torn apart, leaving countless lives shattered in its wake. With time running out and the stakes getting higher and higher, we devised a daring plan to expose the consortium's crimes 
to the world. So we meticulously gathered evidence, connecting the dots and building an airtight case against the corrupt judges and their puppeteers. Undeterred by the danger that lay ahead, we vowed to expose the corruption, no matter what, and bring the shadow consortium to its knees. Yes, it was true. Together, we embarked on a journey to expose the dark underbelly of the court system. There were too many examples of errors and misconduct in just Savannah, Georgia alone. So we could only imagine what was going on in other states. The same corruption, for sure. Their evil influence extended to high-ranking judges and politicians. The citizens of Savannah, Georgia watched in awe and disbelief. The once powerful members of the Shadow Consortium were exposed for the criminals they truly were. A mass cast of characters was coming from corrupt judges to shady lawyers. Everyone evil seemed to have a stake in maintaining the demonic status quo with ill intent at the top of the pyramid. It was true. A hidden agenda was at play. Powerful forces, the like of names we all knew, were lurching all around us, seeking to turn the city of Savannah and then the great country of America into a communist country where individual rights and due process were mere relics of the past. The great experiment, as the United States was often called, was under threat, and it was up to us to protect it. Determined to bring an end to this madness, we embarked on a more focused, perilous journey to uncover the truth and restore justice to the nation that was known as being the best nation that civilization has ever had. We found, not by astonishment, that by using money given by the high-up globalists, again, well known to us commoners, the Shadow Consortium infiltrated the court system according to its twisted ideology. The game was to pay off court judges, powerful attorneys, and anyone who had local influence. Pretty much anyone that hated America as it was, and what it stood for, and wanted to change our system of government from a constitutional republic into a Marxist, communist-controlled, dictatorial government. With the weight of the nation and the Constitution on our shoulders, we fought tirelessly against the forces of corruption. So Anonymous and I gathered evidence and interviewed witnesses, most of whom didn't want to be known and hid behind shuttered windows who had seen deplorable acts of deviance that their friends and family members had to withstand within the court system. We had indeed uncovered the truth. It was our determination that never wavered. With time running out and the stakes higher than ever, we devised a daring plan to expose the consortium's crimes to the world. Anonymous and I meticulously gathered evidence, connecting the dots and building an airtight case against the corrupt judges and their puppeteers. And so it was. Just like that, we finally gathered enough evidence to expose the secret society and its communist agenda. So now, after weeks of asking questions and gathering evidence, the showdown took place in the hallowed halls of the Georgia Supreme Court. The truth was unveiled through court documents going back decades, actually, to be more correct, into the early 20th century. As the truth was unveiled, the citizens of Savannah watched in awe and disbelief. The once powerful members of the Shadow Consortium were exposed for the criminals they truly were, and justice was finally served. We then, with all the information, evidence, and fact-finding, wrote a damning article that, of course, was syndicated. The article we collaborated on would be seen nationwide, and we hoped globally, ensuring that the truth would be seen by millions. It was a victory for justice, a triumph for the Constitution, and a reminder that America must always remain true to its founding principles. As the story spread, it ignited a nationwide conversation about the importance of a fair and just court system where every citizen gets their day in court and a speedy trial. The corrupt judges who were influenced by huge paydays and kickbacks were quickly removed from their positions due to a new presidential administration and steps were taken to ensure that the mistakes of the past would never be repeated. And so it was, the city of Savannah, Georgia, began to heal, and the people regained their faith in the legal system. And Marcus Johnson, the one previously mentioned, jailed for seven and a half years, was released with the court's apologies and a big payout for his many years spent in jail. Anonymous and I had become a symbol of hope and justice, our names forever etched in the annals of Savannah's history. 
We even had a benchmark with a plaque that had our names on it right in front of the courthouse, a plaque that would be a reminder of the justice that was served. Our unwavering commitment to the truth saved the city of Savannah from the clutches of corruption and reminded America of the importance of the Constitution. The great experiment was saved once more from corrupt and demonic globalists who wrongly saw the opportunity to fundamentally change the world. But alas, we, the people, prevailed. Thank <laughs> you.